Welcome to City Skylines 2, the hotly anticipated sequel to everyone's favorite traffic jam simulator. Today, I have been sponsored by Paradox Interactive to build a perfect city. But why am I qualified for such a task? Well, hello ladies and gentlemen, I am the Spiffing Brit. YouTube's professional exploiter of economics, games, and algorithms. The mission is simple. Level up a settlement to the rank of city using the most streamlined and cheesy way possible. Now, this won't be easy. Cities are big, expensive, and full of traffic. Often they're not even able to make a profit. However, I like to think outside of the box. So, get yourself strapped in, grab a cup of tea, and let's begin. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to New Tealand, the start of our brand new mega city. We are playing in a European region, meaning that it is peak summer temperatures of 13 degrees C. Ah, just like England. Now, of course, in city skylines, what I'm expected to do here is found a city, place down some roads, and then zone out a few residential areas, commercial areas, and a few industrial areas. I am, however, going to ignore all of that immediately and simply place down a transformer station. Does it allow us to fight the Decepticons? Unfortunately, no, it does not. The Transformer Station is a very, very boring building that turns low voltage electricity into high voltage and vice versa. This, however, allows us to do something a little bit cheeky. I'm going to place down my giant Transformer Station and then I'm going to place down a whole bunch of wind turbines. They make electricity. Now, of course, everyone in this game requires electricity. So I'm going to place down as many wind turbines as possible until I reach the wonderful production of electricity of 80 megawatts. 80 megawatts is where the magic happens. There we have it, ladies and gentlemen. We are up to 80 megawatts of power production. And now what we need to do is simply connect all of these wonderful little wind turbines into our transformer station. And with that complete, our entire electrical network is set up. But wait, Spiff, this is a terrible idea. You are now losing 1,650 pounds per hour because electricity costs money to produce. So what a way and there's no one in your city to even consume it and sell it to. But don't worry, ladies and gentlemen, because the developers of this game decided to add the outside world. And the outside world is connected to us via this lovely giant chain, which means all we need to do is simply grab this power line here, move it over to the other side of our highway, connect it up like so with the edge of the map, and suddenly we are going to begin a process of exporting electricity. That's right, no longer are we going to actually use our own electricity, we're going to take all 80 megawatts of our production and just simply feed it off of the edge of the map. Now you'll notice we are of course losing 1650 every single hour, which isn't good, but if we let some time pass, uh, that's immediately flipped into being a positive number. Welcome to the section of the video that I like to call Science with Spiff. <laughs> For some incredible reason, the developers now let you import and export resources. This is balanced by it being so very expensive to produce resources in the first place. For example, exporting water will always cost you more in maintenance than the actual export revenue. However, some ingenious developer decided to make wind turbines incredibly cheap to upkeep, meaning that 16 wind turbines will generate $4,700 of profit per hour. They require no maintenance or attention once built making it the easiest and simplest way to make money. After all, who needs tax revenue when you can power an entire city using just the sky? Now with New Tealand effectively set up and running, it became time for me to design the perfect city. One issue I have with cities is there's far too many people. So for me, the perfect city would be one where no one is around to disturb me. That's exactly what I'm going to design. A city for just one person to enjoy. So spinning off from the one road that actually runs into our city, I am going to build a singular alleyway for our lovely citizen to reside in. He is going to live in one single palatial low density house. And just like this, the house is under construction. It shall forever be known as the house, as this is the only house that matters. And so all I need to do is wait and hopefully someone will move into the city. Surely someone, anyone? Look, there's, there's no one else here, okay? You can just move Move in. The house could be yours. They need fresh water, everyone knows that. So we're back. I'll pop in a lovely water pump so we can get some fresh water and I'll drop out a sewage outlet so that we could get rid of all of our waste. The only thing they're missing is a supply of electricity, which luckily we can fix by siphoning off a small amount of electricity from our lovely towers into our own city, powering up this house. 
It's a perfect property, complete with terrifying sculpture in the front lawn. Oh, brilliant. And our first family are actually moving in. Thomas and Rachel Smith, two fully grown adults with a modest wealth, moving into a city designed to be just for them. And look, here they are coming now, rocketing down the highway. Ah, yes, those lovely wind turbines coming into view. They're the source of our city's prosperity, my friends, as this is our first and only family. Anyway, welcome to the street that you'll be living the rest of your life on. I hope you're comfortable. Now what I'm going to do is add both of these people into our lovely human tracker over here. It is definitely not creepy. So that way we can easily pinpoint and focus where everyone is located. But here they are. They've moved into their house. Here's Rachel and here's Thomas. Now, just a heads up, I am playing an early access copy of the game, which means that most of the player models are not finished. However, it matters little. Immediately, they've begun tweeting. Thomas Smith says he loves this summer weather. However, Rachel Smith says, I'm appalled at how healthcare is run in this city. You never know if you're going to get treatment or not. Well, I've got to be honest, we don't actually have healthcare in the city. We kind of just have um, a field. That said, the overall happiness of my citizens is in a positive direction because they have a lovely spacious home and that means we need to rig taxation. But in order to do that, I need to now set up even more power production. Right, I've set up our next level of wind farms that will now start exporting more electricity from the city, allowing us to generate a little bit more money. But I've noticed some very concerning tweets coming in. If this unemployment continues, this will be a ghost town soon. This means that they're probably going to try and move away. No, they're moving away! How could you? You fools! I built this entire city for you! All it took was poverty? Poverty is what made you want to move away? Anyway, uh, the next set of electricity exportation has begun, so our revenue is up to a lovely 6,500 per hour. However, our one family, I think, is just going to bugger off at some point. Oh, actually, um, it would appear they're doing that separately. Yep, Thomas Smith is literally in the car leaving the entire city whilst he has left Rachel Smith behind um, just, just to stand. Uh, on the driveway of their house. <laughs> oh god. Thomas Smith, I'm disappointed. And Rachel Smith, I'm even more disappointed because technically two people liked your tweet and well, I mean, there's only two people in the city, so that means you're liking your own posts. We now have two people moving in instead, Nigel and Samson of the Moreno family. Fantastic, right, we're renaming the street. Welcome to Moreno Street. The Smith family is gone. We can barely remember what they even look like. Okay, it would be easier if Rachel left the picture, I won't lie. Oh, and it would appear something tragic has happened. Um, we were going to have two members of the Moreno family but as they are senior citizens it would indeed appear that one of them has died of old age before even arriving in the city <laughs> Oh god. Anyway, I think we could do with some more money because the more we have, the better. So I'm going to set up even more power lines. Now each transformer station needs 16 perfect wind turbines in order to produce the 80 megawatts necessary to have peak production. And there we go, our next lovely giant wind turbine farm is set up and we can begin exporting all of that electricity out of the city. Finally, our new permanent resident has moved in and the Smiths are gone. Uh, it is no longer the Morenos, uh, they all died off. It is now the John Johnson family, led by Leighton Johnson, an unemployed wealthy individual. He is wealthy because I pay him to live here. We are once again renaming the street in his honour. So we're going to leave him to his devices as I once again continue my endeavour of trying to make as much money as humanly possible. Right, and that is another set of electricity exporting set up, meaning we will once again get increased revenue from our exports. Oh my goodness, and what happened? Did he just move out? What the heck happened to him? He left. Leighton Johnson, I gave you everything. Why did you leave? Um, a new family has moved in. Uh, say hello to Adrian. Adrian here is uh, by himself and unemployed. Really upset with how healthcare is being run and the high crime. Adrian, the high crime in this city that has one person in it. What are you doing? Are you holding yourself hostage? You're the only person in the city and I'm paying you to be here. Alright, I'm gonna crank down the service fee for water and electricity as I imagine that's going to make him feel even more happy. So that should improve his opinion of the city despite the high crime. Household wealth level wretched. Okay, right, he does actually need a job in order to stay here, right? Adrian, I guess the one thing everyone is complaining about is healthcare, so I suppose I could build you your own little medical clinic? How would that sound? Just your own little doctor's office. Now this bad boy does cost 105,000 a month to upkeep, but don't worry, we're making so much money from electricity, it shouldn't matter. Now Adrian, please can you go and work? There we go, he he is going to work at the medical clinic. There we go. You now have a job, you have a purpose, and your wealth level has immediately gone up to wealthy. Fantastic. 
and we have two employees now. Oh, okay, I guess people are commuting in from out of town to work in Adrian's very own mega clinic. Okay, and now Adrian's complaining about there being so many jobs. Okay, Adrian, it's not my fault. And oh, and you don't feel safe to go out at night with all the crime around. Can we get some police here? You are the crime! Average crime probability is up to 21%. 21, there's a 21% chance Adrian could commit a crime against himself. So, as that's the case, we'll build a police station. There we go. Crime has now been eliminated from the city with one man after he has presumably decided to stop committing all of the crime. And now he's incredibly happy, which is what we like to see. But what I need to see is more money, as this city could get so much better. So in order to do that, we need even more wind turbines. Right, and there we go, we've immediately started producing more electricity for our city, which is very good. That's more money led back into Adrian's coffers, presumably. Oh dear, and what's this? A, a tweet from the City Census Bureau. Our research shows birth rates are going down. There will be less needs for services if this continues. Adrian, can you... Could you try and have some children, maybe? Like, that would be great. But yes, you are poorly educated, so I think you do want some form of education. So, um, let's see what I can do. Now, in order to unlock the better tiers of education, I'm going to have to sink some of my lovely progression points into a college. I'm going to have to spend a stupendous amount of money building this for you, Adrian. So I hope you get some good use out of it, because I've just built you your own private college. Oh, and of course we have to build a college library, which increases Adrian's chance of actually graduating. Right, Adrian, you have no experience excuses now. You should really send yourself off to college, get yourself educated, and whilst all of this is happening, I need to build even more wind turbines. Okay, Adrian is now complaining about the rain, which is kind of a British rite of passage, so that's very good. Nice to see that his spirits are high. At the same time, there we go, I've just got another grid of lovely wind turbines set up, which is increasing the quantity we're going to be exporting, and I'll immediately build even more. All right, Adrian, I have noticed that you have chosen not to go to college, um, which I'm very annoyed by. And you know what? Actually, the city is large enough for me to create my very own district, which is a very good idea, as that allows us to set some policies. So so this is going to be our lovely district of Adrian East. Fantastic. It is a wealthy area with six employees, which is very exciting. I don't know who is actually commuting in from out of town, but people are actually starting to work at the college. You know what? I'll even research and unlock car parks for them all. It would probably be a good idea for me to actually build some form of transportation so that we can get people into this world that aren't just Adrian to work the jobs. Right, okay, I've built a car park for our city. There we go. Adrian's happy. He now has a place to park. You know, he should also actually have a place to park around anyway. So I'm going to give him a small playground just next door to his house. It looks wonderful. That's going to make him very happy. We need to make even more money. So that's exactly what I'm going to set about doing. Adrian, for you, I'm going to capture all of the wind in the entire universe and use it to fund our glorious empire. The thing is, this strategy doesn't even work with most other builds, just simply for the reason that actually the maintenance costs of power plants is very high, whereas wind turbines don't even need workers, making them very cheap. So, well, bam, that is another power line set up and exporting electricity out into the wider world. We are now up to producing 1,365 megawatts of electricity. This is over the entire power production that a nuclear power plant can manage, which is very good indeed, especially when we are now making a monthly electricity net positive of 3.3 million. But still, life for our one citizen is going well. Every day he wakes up and walks across the street over to his job, and then he walks all the way back across the street and goes and plays in the one single playground I gave him. However, there is one current accident in our city, which is that there is an ongoing forest fire. Now, if I am not careful, the forest fire will go and destroy my power line. However, I have discovered that simply you can use the bulldozer tool and uh, select all of the trees that are currently on fire and uh, will then just delete it. And there you go, the fire kind of stops itself. Evidently, someone's coming along and stomping out these flames. So uh, yes, it works. And there we go, just like that, one forest fire defeated. Perfectly balanced. And you know what? Even though there isn't a dog in our city, I'm going to build a singular dog park. Here you go. Well, bam, there you go, Adrian. Enjoy it. You should get yourself a dog. This is just like a little bit of a hint. Oh, and our town has now expanded up to a busy town. There we go. We are now a level seven town, uh, which is very, very impressive considering that we have one person living in the city. And if we keep going down this pathway, we will eventually be able to unlock city promotion, which will allow us to effectively start a tourism campaign to get 
people to come over here and visit New Tea Land and see our one main character, Adrian, do whatever it is Adrian does. Welcome back to City Skylines, ladies and gentlemen. Our wonderful, lovely hero and only member of the city has decided to um, stand outside today in the uh, blistering rain and sunshine. Meanwhile, whilst he's doing all of this, uh, I have been hard at work expanding the power infrastructure of the city. Uh, we now have quite a lot of wind turbines. We are making a nice and steady 139,000 per hour. But from this point on, I intend to basically just AFK, wait for the money to appear, as Adrian isn't exactly aging anytime soon, so we still have have a nice way to go. Oh, but watch out, Adrian. I know you've been complaining about high crime again, but here comes the one police car we have. Oh, it's he's gonna get you, Adrian. He's gonna get you. Oh, he's literally stopping right outside your house. He could he could have got you. Would you look at everything? It has just gotten lovely and wintry and foresty and just all around lovely jubbly. And at the same time, we have 8.9 million in the bank, which is an insane amount of money. We're about to cross that 9 million threshold. We're making 164,000 per month. We're making 7. 4.4 million of that off of our service trade. Also, we are now up to uh, the value of Great Town, which is very nice. We are almost at the point where we can be classed as a small city. I wanted to do something extra special, which is um, build a nuclear power plant. As I mentioned, I wanted to turn Adrian into a little bit of a tourist attraction, so that's what I'm going to do. I thought it'd be very cute if we give Adrian his very own personal harbour. Uh, go visit Adrian in his own little paradise. And yeah, sure, it costs a bunch of money and is kind of useless, but at the same time, it's very funny. Okay, in order to uh, build my boat access out of the city, I'm going to have to um, construct a very silly little seaway all the way down this tiny little river. One widened seaway for all of the lovely seamen to sail on. And well, bam, there we go. We actually have connected with the outside world. Brilliant. Oh, people can now actually enter the city. Oh, and here comes our little passenger ferry. Look at it go. It's having a grand old time. I mean, it's a little bit choppy, but that's fine. No one's riding it, but that's also fine. Oh, and he's complaining he can't access the internet. Okay, Adrian, I'll sort that out for you. There we go. Sorry, apologies. Uh, let's build that giant telecom tower there. Give it a big signal boost just for you, Adrian. All right, now you should be chuffed with the internet speeds. I need to actually build even more wind turbines. So I'm going to set about building more wind turbines because I want to reach the rank of at least being a city before I start introducing other people into Adrian's world. So I have uh, made a little bit of a discovery. Now this definitely isn't intended, I can tell you that much, but I was getting concerned about the fact that I was going to run out of area which actually had good wind speed in my city and I noticed that because of the way the maps are designed, pretty much anything outside of your map borders is nearly perfect wind, always 5 megawatts, which is brilliant. However, it's outside of your borders and you can't build anything outside of your borders. However, it seems that I can build uh, wind turbines outside of the border of my city, which is pretty useful indeed because this now just means that I can simply place buildings out here like so um, in effectively no man's land. So there we go, I've just built myself uh, 16 wind turbines that aren't actually in my city. And what I'm going to try and do now is connect them. Uh, and yep, it turns out that I can do that, yeah. It, the game is not a fan of the way I am connecting these power lines, but provided you hit the right spot on the wind turbine, uh, life finds a way. Oh, that one just clipped through some terrain. I mean, I guess when people talk about living off the grid, this is probably what they mean, right? Yeah, this is um, this is off the grid. It, it is off the grid electricity. Oh, I've become an eco-being. So there we go. That's now 16 brand new wind turbines uh, all hooked up to this one tiny little transformer station that is actually in my own city. And yeah, it's just going to make me money now. This is very, very, very silly indeed. <laughs> Yeah, you are not meant to be able to build outside of your city's boundaries. This is uh, very much out of the area I'm allowed to access, but um, it's not stopping me now, baby. So ladies and gentlemen, we've achieved the impossible. We now have a small city. That's right, an entire small city is under our control. This means that we can build high density offices and we can finally do city promotion. We would actually encourage tourists to come along and visit our city. But just before I do that, I have discovered something even weirder with building off the map. Uh, it turns out if you build off the map, it basically removes all of the limitations the game has. So for example, I can't build, say, this coal power plant because uh, it's underwater here. However, if I were to 
to go off of the map, suddenly it's completely fine. Not underwater, and if I put it in the map, yep, it's in the water. But no, 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 you just drag it out a bit and suddenly can float. It's wonderful. I think it is time we get our tourist game on, and so for that I'm going to be spending some of my development points unlocking tourist attractions. So we'll unlock park maintenance, large parks, sports parks, large sports parks, and tourist attractions. So step one, first tourist attraction. What do we got? Oh, we can build a big old space needle, we got a bronze statue, and we have a water park. Nice. I like this observation tower, it's pretty cool. I and mean, we could put it on, like, literally off of the entire video game world, uh, somewhere off in the distance over there. You know, we should put it behind Adrian's house. Yep, yeah, this seems like a brilliant idea. Imagine trying to just live your life, and then behind your house, there is a $3.2 million costing observation tower, which people are just going up purely so they can have a better view at your one existence. Oh, it's brilliant. Brilliant. It's gonna be amazing. Uh, now, I want to take a look at our graphs basically to see how many tourists we have. So, tourism graph wise, zero tourists in the city, but that is going to change now. We are going to become a tourist metropolis, I tell you. Let's get that bronze statue in. This is going to be a statue of none other than Adrian himself, so we might as well plop it next to Adrian's house. But look at this. Yeah, Adrian, look at you, you wise, glorious scholar looking into the orb, pondering the orb, as some would say. Okay, the Grand Adrian Bridge is at just over 500 meters in length. It is a beauty of a bridge. So magnificent. What is it called? Grand Bridge? Come on. Adrian's Grand Bridge. There we go. Fantastic. So, yep, our new tourism campaign is a go. We have all of the monuments tourists would want to see. Probably. Let's see our graph. Any tourists? Any tourists? Come on. Any day now, Adrian, our first tourist will come into the city. And when they do, we need some hotels for them to stay at. There we go. Right, let's get some commercial laid down. This is where um, the people will stay when they come and visit Adrian. But Adrian's life is currently going well. He is having a grand old time. He loves the internet connection that the city has. And he is not at all concerned by the existence of the mega tower. <laughs> oh my god, it's so much bigger than his house. Oh god, it's literally just the creepiest pilgrimage in the world. We can also build Adrian his own private little swimming pool uh, by having a water park constructed. There we go. That'll make him very happy. Gosh, what a wonderful thing we've built. Okay, we've got a ferry coming in. Anyone on board? No, no one on board the ferry. Are there people on board this ferry? One passenger! There is one passenger en route! Oh my god, this is incredible. I mean, it's, it's actually leaving the city. Adrian, you best not be leaving the city. Where are you, Adrian? Okay, no, you're sleeping. You're sleeping in your house, lovely. Okay, that was someone else passing through. It's okay. Tourism-wise, um, the buses are now a go in Adrian's life, and uh, there is still no one yet to visit the city, but it is a, it's a rainy day. How can we expect people to turn up on a rainy day? Welcome to Adrian East, the greatest location. Maybe I need to turn off the gated community. <laughs> Oh my god, it's happened. It's happened. Um, tourists. There are eight tourists somewhere en route to the city. There are tourists somewhere on the map. God, this is terrifying. They could be anywhere, Adrian. They could be among us. They're gonna love the city. Everything we've built here. Everything we've built for you, Adrian. Oh my goodness, there's, a, there's an oil truck just delivering oil. <gasps> People! People in the city, Adrian! Humans! Um... Oh, this city's incredibly noisy, you can barely think. Adrian, shut up. Stop complaining about the noise. Okay, tourism is climbing. Um, actually, quite decently. Okay, we're up to 20 somehow of... Oh, actually, is your is your house leveling up? <gasps> it is. Adrian, if you're... Oh my god, you're old now. You're retired. Adrian is a senior citizen. Oh my goodness. Oh, <laughs> he's homeless. What? How could you be homeless? Adrian, you, you live in the one house of the city. Someone else is moving in. Adrian, what's going on? Are you moving out? You're retired? So uh, what, I guess you can't afford where you're living? Do you need somewhere else, like a low rent location? Okay, fine. Adrian, I'm gonna give you a, a small area to move into and retire into because please, uh, Adrian, you're, you're my beloved. Adrian is moving in, he's staying in the city. Oh yes, Adrian. I've done it, ladies and gentlemen. I found Adrian. Now, unfortunately, he has been kicked out of his house. Um, even though he tried to buy a room in the giant apartment block, he was bought out by everyone else wanting to live there. So Adrian is literally just idling around in the small playground, homeless. 
Uh, I, you know, I'm proud of him. He's lived an incredibly long and glorious life, and he's been here from the start of this tiny, tiny village to it now becoming a small city, still with a population of one. And oh, look at all of the people arriving in our city. These are our tourists. Wonderful. We've actually kind of got a little city set up, and it's even got dogs. <gasps> the dogs have names. It's Barry the dog. Oh my goodness. Oh, jeez. It does not get better than that. So Adrian, uh, Adrian's current place of residence is the bronze statue. <laughs> this poor guy. He's been kicked out of everywhere. Oh, and our city's population is now up to a relatively blistering 13. That's right, 13 whole people here. Oh, and Adrian is uh, going home. Going home where, Adrian? Going home to the bronze statue. <laughs> Adrian, I, I love you, but this is, this is incredibly depressing. My poor friend. Here he is, just waddling his way across the city. I mean, the good news is he's happy, I guess. At least he's happy. Right, how's tourism doing? Okay, tourism is doing good. We're up to now 70 tourists, so I feel like the longer we go on, the more and more tourists are going to be turning up, which is a nice benefit to the city. Adrian has been with us for so long, and I often wonder what his life has been like, because he just moved into a tiny little street with a single house, and then the world's largest wind farm was built <laughs> just next door. I suppose maybe he doesn't have to deal with pigeons, because they just fly through this death alley, and uh, yeah, no pigeons to worry about. And I I guess maybe that's a free source of food which would explain how he's been sustaining himself so long without any access to groceries. Uh, Adrian, you're a survivor. A true, true survivor. Oh my god, uh, this is insane. Um, Adrian's life has completely changed. I was wondering that, oh, this man's gonna be uh, stuck at the bronze statue forever. But no, no, I built this giant apartment block just to see if Adrian would move in. And he did better than move in, ladies and gentlemen. He got married. I can't believe I finally got married to Jessica Hennessy. That's right, he is no longer the Adrian we know. He is now Adrian Hennessy. He is transformed and he is moving into his brand new house with his wife. And there we have it, ladies and gentlemen. We have completed City Skylines 2. We started with a non-existent village of New Tea Land and grew it into something that the game would class as a city. Did it technically still only house one dude? Yes, yes it did. But it doesn't matter. We built something magnificent. Something that generated infinite quantities of money and destroyed the fabric of reality by just sucking the wind out of the sky. We started with a humble dream, but we sucked for success. And I think that's something we could all learn a lot from in life. But there we have it. If you enjoyed today's video and you enjoyed our wonderful adventure inside the game and you want to see more very silly cities in the future, then make sure to give this video a like and hop into the comment section to let me know that you want more. It also tells Paradox Interactive that they've made a good decision in terms of sponsoring me and my shenanigans. As always, a massive thank you to each and every one of you lovely amazing sausages for watching and our glorious patrons and channel members for funding our channel. Oh, you majestic bastards. Thank you very much. Anyway, I'll see each and every one of you in the next one. Have a lovely day and goodbye for now.